Hi, I'm Leonie and welcome to my channel. And if you were a subscriber already, long time no see. Uh, I'm really excited to be back and to be sharing art videos with you again here on YouTube. Uh, so let's get started. Today I want to start out with showing you the entire process of how I create a pet portrait. I start out by sketching out the entire portrait on a loose sheet of paper first. I generally do this on marker paper because I find it sketches really well and it's very thin. And since I want to transfer the sketch uh, to watercolor paper later, that's very convenient. I like sketching out the entire portrait first because it really allows me to loosely uh, explore what the pet is like and to figure out what kind of elements give it its characteristics. And of course its personality. It also allows me to just make mistakes. As you'll see here, I was struggling with the pause a little bit, but that wasn't really a problem because I was sketching this on a loose sheet of paper first, so I could just fix it later. I also um, try to figure out the proportions here, and if something in the sketch isn't right, I can give myself notes on how to change it. When I'm happy with the sketch, I transfer it onto watercolor paper. I use Arches watercolor paper for that right now, 300 gram weight, and I use full cotton paper. Now I don't want to sketch directly onto the paper because uh, if I have to erase things then I, I might damage the paper. And watercolor paper is very expensive so you don't want to go through sheet after sheet. As you can see here, I transfer the sketch using a light box and after that is finished I start inking it. When I do the outlines for pet portraits like these, I use a synthetic brush pen to create the outlines. I like using these pens for this because uh, the brush pens have a great variety in thickness. Um, if you only press lightly on it, it has a very thin streak, but if you press on it a little harder, then it will taper out at the end. And that gives the impression of a sort of unique and varied line. You can see this effect really well here. Every stroke that I put down has a variety of thick and thin within it, and that gives the impression of fur. Um, I prefer working with uh, the Copic variety of this because I'm really happy with the blackness of the ink and it, it's waterproof but it's also alcoholic ink proof so whatever I use it won't bleed. When I go over it with uh, water or paint or markers or anything. That way I can just always grab the same brush pen if I want. After we've put down all the lines, uh, we can erase all the pencil marks that may be visible underneath and we can get started with painting. Generally speaking, I go from big brushes to smaller brushes as I move along with the painting. The big brushes are better to cover a larger area of the paper with sort of a unique, uh, uniform uh, color, while smaller brushes are better to add details, as you'll see later on. I always pick out something that's sort of like a mid-sized section so that I can get my feel for the paint and the water again. Um, you don't want your paint to be, or your brush to be too dry because uh, the paint will get soaked up by the water and then you'll get a hard line and you don't want that effect. I start by laying down a single base color. This color uh, informs the color scheme that we're working on and since watercolor is uh, transparent, you'll see it shining throughout the later layers. It also helps create a more uniform color scheme as the painting goes along. After the base coat is down and dried for a bit, we can start adding uh, the next washes of color. It's at this point that I usually start adding different colors in different layers of painting. You want every layer to dry in between, because if you don't, you'll get very muddy colors. Uh, but if you do, then this technique will allow you to get a more uh, complex depth of color in the painting that you're trying to create. Which is of course caused by the transparency that we were talking about earlier. The reason that I want to do that is because if you look at uh, most pets, you'll see or it'll look like the fur is not one uniform color. It's not like one block of color. It'll have varieties of uh, the same color or even different colors within it. Even if the fur is 
just yellow or just black, the way the red light reflects on the different hairs will give a different color experience. And you want this to be reflected in a painting as well. And now I'll shut up for a little bit and let you enjoy the painting process. You'll notice as I'm going along that every layer dries up a little bit lighter, but that every little layer gives a little bit more depth through each section of the fur. You'll also see that I'm using smaller and smaller brushes as I go along to lay down small streaks to give some extra furry effect. We're coming along on the final step uh, of this process, which is adding the details. And this is my absolutely favorite part because this is where the portrait really starts to shine and gets the last bit of its personality and it really comes alive. I decided for this portrait to use uh, pencils as well as watercolor because it was a very rough sort of textured dog and these pencils uh, just gave that little bit of oomph to the fur. You'll notice here too that I'm using different colored pencils just as I was using different colored paints before. Uh, and that's to create that color within the fur that we were talking about earlier. And there we have it, the final result for our pet portrait. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I had a blast making this and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I hope you'll like and subscribe and do all that stuff and let me know what else you want to see because that really helps me to feel inspired to create more content for you. And finally, I want to give a huge thank you shout out to my patrons. Uh, they really help to keep me going and to make me create new art every single day. So thank you guys. And I hope you have a really nice day and I will see you again soon. Bye.